Do you struggle when it comes to coloring your art? Here are three methods to color starting with grayscale. Now, I started as a black and white artist, so when I first started painting digitally, it was hard to pick colors because I was overwhelmed by all the options within the color selector. Huh? 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 When trying the typical coloring process, I would choose the base colors and apply shadows and highlights, but the colors would turn out muddy. This is because focusing only on values ignores the hue shifts and saturation changes when you add color that gives the picture that extra spice. As a quick overview, there are three fundamentals you want to play with when painting. Value, which is how light or dark a color is and is integral to developing form and depth. Hue, which is the color selection and can be broken by temperature between warm and cool colors. And saturation, which is the intensity of the color ranging from gray to the pure color. When selecting colors in digital art, there is the color wheel to select the hue and adjust the value and saturation of each color. But to choose each factor methodically, you can isolate each aspect. The reason to start with grayscale first is that value is the most important fundamental to build your composition. Color is less important as you can put a random mix of colors if you have legible values. But if you don't have clear value before defining your colors and saturations, the piece may lose its overall structure. To demonstrate this, I'll use random colors using the color jitter settings within my brush. You can do this by going to the tool sub settings and turning the color jitter and randomizer on like so. You can also change the brush texture based on how smooth you want the color transition to be between hard, textured, and soft brushes. I'll change it to a soft brush which I'll use to paint over my canvas in a separate layer that I'll later convert into a color layer over the value. As you can see, the picture is still legible in its form, and it actually has a cohesive look with a hologram aesthetic, despite being all random colors. This is why we see grayscale and other monochromatic methods in traditional underpainting techniques to focus on the values of the painting to render form, light, and shadow first before honing in on the hue and saturation with glazing. To practice with grayscale, you can start by studying paintings and converting those paintings or pictures to grayscale to isolate values. For reference, I'm currently studying the Dutch artist Peter Ravin as I really like his dynamic paintings touching on corporate settings with very expressive forms. To render for painting, distill the values into its broader shapes with larger brushes, then progressively get more detailed with smaller brushes. You can start out with two values for the simplest composition mapping, three to five for more varied and detailed values, and more as you develop your gradients. For another way to shade, you can also create a multiply layer which will add value on top of the existing layer. Throughout the process, I like to start with harder edges to simplify form, then develop it later by softening edges with the smudge tool or a brush with softer edges. When finishing grayscale, sometimes my values are too aggressively dark or too light. So I like to use tonal correction to adjust both the brightness and contrast. Then I'll touch it up with any last highlights or shadows like so. When studying realistic paintings, you can see more contrast with darker shadows and brighter highlights. But when doing studies of some impressionist paintings, you can see that value has less contrast, which is softer on the eye. As an advanced tip, you may also want to separate various grayscale objects into groups of what you plan to color each one. For example, separating the suit layer versus the person. Now that we have our base values, we can now focus on color. I'll start with the most manual methods and get progressively more automated. To start the most manual way to color your grayscale, create a new layer and switch it to color mode. This will only filter for the hue and saturation and will not adjust the values of the layer below. Here, you can select different colors to paint above and glaze your value layer with more control over each section while also adjusting for saturation within the color wheel. When choosing colors, typically you want to balance between warm and cool colors. Here, I'm using a warm orange to go with a cooler green hue and use saturation to call attention to certain areas of your painting while highlighting areas of transition from light to dark. I explain this further in my video on cell shading, but typically saturation will peak when light is transitioning into shadow 
and will slowly become more muted as it gets lighter towards white or darker towards black, which this triangle color wheel displays. To add more visual interest, I also like to slightly shift the hues of colors depending on the light towards warmer or cooler colors. See how this hue shifts from a warm orange to yellow and then to green? The hue is shifting in the direction of a cool blue and we can have a gradient of temperatures as you transition towards it. For example, if I have a shadow from a warmer light, I may shift the darker colors towards a cooler blue as the shadow gets darker. At the same time, I may desaturate it to a more muted gray as it gets away from peak saturation. One trick to make your highlights shine brighter is to replace your full whites in the lightest areas with a small tint of the base color's complementary color. Here, the base color of the skin is a warm orange, so I'll tint the white highlight in the cheeks a cool blue. Let me transition to another version of the art piece where I'm trying to have a certain orange subsection of the skin stand out as more lively, while trying to have a more dead area of skin outside the subsection, almost like the face has a mask on, by using a saturated warm orange and then a very desaturated cool blue. The contrast in color, temperature, and saturation both support this extra pop within the area of focus. Once you have an initial first pass, we can move on to the next way to color your grayscale, which is adjusting color and saturation through tonal correction, which is done by selecting the area you want to change, and then clicking edit, tonal correction, and adjusting the sliders on the hue, saturation, and luminosity panel. This way is great when you want to adjust big sections for the overall color composition of your piece, but a layer of color on top of the grayscale is needed first to modify. Even with the same color of green, you can see that I try to subtly transition the lighter areas to warmer green versus a cooler green within the shadows. Additionally, the hue shifter is helpful for playing with the hues. Here I'm experimenting with the skin changing the orange hue to a more reddish or pink hue that is complementary to the green background and then increasing the saturation to highlight the face as a focal point. But now on to the last coloring method. Lastly, the easiest way to color grayscale is through gradient maps which apply colors based on a full gradient of values from the base layer. The gradient map option is found by clicking tonal correction, then gradient maps where you can experiment, add, and adjust the various colors to make unique gradients. You can also experiment with gradient map presets and save down your custom gradient maps to toggle through and preview before choosing one. Gradient maps can bring a piece together with unified colors across a selected area or a certain lighting pattern but can be limited to coloring some spots with a unique area. But to further color different objects separately, you can use your separated layers that we talked about previously and apply your gradient maps one by one or go back to the first method with a color type layer to do some spot touches. After implementing these coloring methods into your digital art process, it's now very easy to experiment, mix, and match color schemes. I hope your painting process becomes more streamlined and effective. Happy painting! I'm a self-taught artist that likes to learn new art techniques in my goal of creating manga. So if you'd like to join me on my art journey, feel free to subscribe and check out my other videos here on topics including cell shading. In addition, if you like my art, you can also support me by purchasing my prints through my imprint store, link below. Thanks for watching.